Hey guys, good afternoon. Mike Bland uh, here with SIS Global Investigations again. Was just watching a uh, update on the Idaho murders and I saw an inside edition. They were playing that the a video that the gas station uh, manager or employee actually was the one that sat down and reviewed all of the security footage to see if there was any suspicious vehicles leaving at the date and time of the murders. And the fact that uh, law enforcement did not do this, even the family's attorney was speaking about this, is, is literally mind-blowing to me, uh, being a 25-year investigator myself uh, and retired cop. The fact that the police did not sit and go through this, and instead, the more I'm hearing about this now, the more picture this is painting for me, the, the fact that they're quelling rumors on social media and, and trying to pacify the public on rumors and amateur sleuth accusations about this guy being a stalker, or this guy being a murderer, or the guy at Taco Bell being a murderer, and got the food truck being the murderer or stalker, and worried about, you know, investigating all these random people and then getting back and letting the public actually even know also if these people did or did not do something. Again, <clears throat> it's, it's law enforcement's job description is not to quell rumors, rumor control. It is to do investigations serve and protect the public but serving the public uh there's community policing but then there's quelling rumors and handling social media drama control um you know they're not a pr company they are a invest in the investigations business and that means doing old school police work and reviewing the security footage at every residence every business every building every structure anyone that has a camera and seeing this vehicle. Another funny thing I have heard mentioned nowhere, and that's because, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately sometimes guys like me actually, that know what we're doing don't get to work on cases like this because um, God forbid we might figure something out and steal all of the, uh, steal everyone's thunder. But another thing, that vehicle that was seen speeding away, which was a white vehicle, one thing I learned from criminal highway interdiction over the years, uh, interdicting guns and drugs off the interstates, a lot of times rental vehicles are white vehicles. So this vehicle, now the fact that I've seen this, um, I'm going to go on a limb and guess that this is probably not a personally owned vehicle. The vehicle is probably owned or probably rented from, you know, an enterprise, one of the other companies. Um, you know, there's Hertz. I don't even, there's, there's numerous rental car companies, but I'm going to guess that that's probably the case. Um, you know, but the fact the woman at the gas station had to find this is, it's to me, is pretty disturbing. And like I said, the more the picture I'm being seen painted now actually makes me question if, if those police there are capable of solving this crime at all. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't know how much federal law enforcement's involved in this or if they are at all, but, and, and sometimes they got some really good guys too. Um, it's just sad. This is the reason a lot of people always ask me, why did you get out of law enforcement? Why did you quit being a cop? I'm a million times the investigator now than I ever was as a patrolman. You know, you were you only allowed to think this much and only had access to a certain amount of databases and, and, and going out and really digging into things. There are some specialized units out there that exist in some departments uh, where they're allowed to go after the really bad guys and, you know, and, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of like the LA County in California and going after, you know, robbery, homicide, you know, the really high line, um, organized, you know, criminal, uh, taking down armored cars, different things like that, or, uh, armed suspects or anti-gang, you know, something hardcore like that. Those guys are, you know, the real deal and allowed to get out there and really tear things up and, um, and have unlimited, you know, time, money, and resources. But, you know, most of your patrolmen and your cops, um, a lot of times, and a lot of guys I worked with, unfortunately, couldn't catch a cold. And many times it was just these guys telling me they were in the job to collect a paycheck. And uh, I was always a guy that was a go-getter myself and realized that there was more money to be made and more investigations I could do and solve, you know, being a private investigator. But this kind of stuff here, when I see this, it just reminds me of why people have no more faith in the system, in law enforcement, 
I mean, um, there's no excuse for any of this. And if they're overwhelmed, they need more people. Um, simple as that. It's their job. They're not performing the duty. And reviewing a video is something you can literally sit in a chair and review a gas station security video. So there is, there's, there is no excuse for something like that. It's honestly pathetic. So again, and every minute, you know, day, week, month that goes by on a case like that too, again, it's not a good sign. I can tell you that right now. This kind of stuff makes my blood boil when I watch uh, that the public is, is working on this and, and literally trying to solve this. Um, and all you hear about the police captain talking about is quelling rumors and how this is hampering the investigation. So I'm not so sure these guys have ever solved anything.